what I'm going to do is on the first frame, hit S, then keyframe the scale by checking this stopwatch, page down one frame, and then increase the scale a little. And that just gives it a little bit more life, increasing the scale. But just show the mask position again. And just make sure it is feathered because otherwise these sparks are going to hit the hard edge. Whereas with a bit of feathering, they're going to look like they fade out. So we just save our project and preview it back very briefly. You can see already it's looking very cool. Now the only thing we're missing really, uh, because the spell is looking pretty complete, is just some real life interaction. The way you might go about that. Right, so get rid of something. The way you go about that is adding an adjustment layer, right click, new adjustment layer. We're just going to pen out some of the areas we think it should, the light should hit. I'm just going to, just going to very roughly draw on his arm, his face. You do this very detailed. Me, I'm just showing you what to do. And then effects, color correction, exposure. Just increase the exposure a bit. That's going to increase the brightness. Oh, well, as you can see. And then feather them all. Select all the masks, hold down shift, and feather it out. May not look like much, but it's enough to sell the effect. Let's begin it here. Go to there and fade it out. So let's hit a T for transparency, go to the first frame, start keyframing, and then by here, bring it to zero. Like that, beautiful. You might want to actually keyframe the masks the way you do that. Hit M to show the masks and keyframe the mask path. And then you can start adjusting and then each frame you can change the mask slightly. Just like that. So that's looking awesome. Like I said, we want to add some glow. So you could add it to the whole composition, but that will start to glow some of the background colours. But you might want that, so we're going to create a new adjustment layer. Effect, stylize, glow. It's also an effective way of creating some kind of soft focus style effect. Just increase the radius to blur it out a bit so you don't notice it so much. Or decrease the intensity, you don't need it that intense. So that does look cool. Another thing you might want to do, if we duplicate the inner circle and hit P for position, go to the first keyframe and keyframe position, go to the second keyframe and you just drag in the end so it the second version is only on one frame. But if we extend the head, it's called the head of the clip because it's the start, and go to when he gets about there. Oops. Let's hide the mask. Let's move it to the end of the one. Page down to go forward. And if we just map it to the wand, 
can't even see where the wand is there. And over the time as well, hit T for transparency. And set a keyframe here by choosing that. And then bring the opacity down here. Turn on motion blur for this layer. And then it kind of lights as he goes along. You just see how that looks. Now one of the things I did in this shot was just very basically colour correct it, which you can do using Filmagic Pro. I like to colour correct mine by myself, but for time purposes we're just going to search FMP and well, that blue easy. Beautiful. Nice spell casting, Tom. You might want to add some camera shake again. Check out Video Copilot, but that's just a very basic spell casting tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to export it, obviously go to Composition, add to Render Queue, or Google it. It's up to you. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, hope you made it through it, survived it. And if you want to post what you've managed to create as a response, that would be awesome.